technology as it's being used. And so now I'd like to talk about CUDA's momentum and CUDA's adoption all over the world. There's a lot of different ways you can measure CUDA's acceptance. And I've chosen three for a very specific reason. The first one is the CUDA SDK cumulative downloads. This is a reflection of the number of engineers, researchers, and scientists all over the world that are downloading our SDK, running it on their PC, and developing some application or investigating some algorithm um, themselves. And so in 2009, we had a cumulative 293,000 downloads. And just in one year's time, we've doubled that. So now at 668,000 downloads. Now, there are many situations where a single engineer or a single researcher would download the SDK several times. And there's many instances where somebody would download it once and share it with their uh, enterprise network. And so the number of actual users is hard to say, but the number of downloads is very, very clear, that there are many developers around the world that are like you, developing applications and using CUDA for research. Now the second metric I chose reflects the interest in the end markets to deploy the CUDA applications. Because if there's interest in the end markets and the end user base to deploy these applications in a production scale, their interest would be reflected back to the OEMs. And the OEMs would therefore design high performance computing platforms based around Tegra, uh, based around Tesla to offer to the marketplace. The Tesla number of OEMs last year at this time was one. We announced one OEM. There was one other, we were the other, and we were seeding uh, one U racks uh, to developers all over the world, and we had one Tesla OEM. Today, we have nine OEMs with 19 SKUs that they offer. Now, these nine OEMs represent every single enterprise quality, enterprise level server OEM in the world. And I'll describe a few of them uh, moments later. And the third that I s selected reflects the research that people are actually doing. How they're really using this technology for discovery. And I, the one that I chose was GTC submissions. Last year we had 67 papers. We thought it was just really terrific for the first year of GTC. This year we had 334. There's a lot of different ways you can measure the number of papers that are available that are written about research done on CUDA. One of my favorites, just recently at ACS, the American Chemical, Chemical Society in Boston, there were 30 papers that were written around CUDA, or written about research that was done on CUDA. And these are all research done in the area of computational biology. And one of the papers was particularly interesting, and it says, GPUs, what's all the buzz about? That paper is really talking about the buzz around GPUs in that entire industry of pharmas and computational biology and computational chemistry. That entire area is really buzzing and looking for the breakthrough in computational capability so they could deploy this level of resource to all of their researchers. You can see papers cropping up all over the place. Supercomputing, SIGGRAPH, loaded with CUDA papers. Next year, I can't wait to come back and tell you more about the CUDA momentum. And we'll select these three again, and we'll select a few others to look at. But it's very, very clear now that CUDA is making very deep inroads into er all areas of science and engineering. Today, we want to introduce something to you that you have been asking us about. We now know that CUDA has reached all geographies around the world. That's available from personal computers in, from every single PC company in the world in every single geography. We now know that if you develop applications for it, that you could deploy it on servers from every enterprise server company in the world. 
What else can we do to make CUDA more pervasive? What else can we do to expand the reach of what is already recognized as the most open and available parallel computing architecture in history? Well, we ask ourselves, and many of you have asked us, suppose we were to develop a CUDA application, and before the GPU cluster was implemented, you wanted to try it. Or suppose you had developed a CUDA application, and as you deploy to all of your customers, some of them have GPU clusters and some of them don't have GPU clusters. Or you have a mix of both. You want your CUDA application to run everywhere. I'm really excited to announce today that we're collaborating with one of the leading compiler companies in high-performance computing, PGI, Portland Group, to develop CUDA x86. With this compiler, with CUDA x86, you can now deploy CUDA applications literally on any computer and any server in the world, opening and expanding the reach of CUDA in a very, very big way. You can now safely develop CUDA applications knowing that you can deploy it more richly than any parallel computing architecture previously. So I'm really, really excited about this first announcement, CUDA x86. A big round of applause for PGI. And so now, we've put CUDA in the hands of every developer in the world. If you would like to program CUDA, you could buy a PC anywhere from any PC company. If you would like to deploy CUDA, you could deploy it on servers from every enterprise server company. What else can we do to put CUDA in the hands of researchers who would like to have the benefits of high-performance computing at their fingertips? Well, I think at this point, you're really looking at killer apps. What are the type of applications that can really benefit all of you? Now, if you could, if I could just ask you a favor, by a show of hands, how many of you have heard of an application called MATLAB? How many of you have heard, known, how many of you have worked with MATLAB, uh, uh, known somebody who's worked with MATLAB, or know a researcher, engineer, or scientist who's worked with MATLAB? Could you show, as a show of hands? So basically, nearly 100%. Um, this MATLAB is probably the most popular computation program in the world. And it's, you know, for engineers, uh, it's probably the most popular application short of Excel and um, World of Warcraft. <laughs> Today, we're really happy to announce something uh, that we've done with uh, MATLAB. And, and uh, uh, they're, they're, they're making the announcement and reporting it to you. You know, MATLAB is used by a million researchers around the world, engineers, researchers, all over the world. This is a program that was, um, it's called Matrix Laboratory. It was, it was actually developed in, the, in uh, 1970 or so um, by uh, scientists who wanted to make it possible for their students to access LIMPAC without having to program in Fortran. And over the years, because of its flexible high-level language, it's evolved into basically a general purpose numerical computation package. Uh, it is probably the most high product, highly productive computation package uh, that the world's ever known. You could use it for all kinds of things now. And they have this really important capability offering called toolkits. You can get statistics toolkits, you can get signal processing toolkits, image processing toolkits, data acquisition toolkits, financial derivatives toolkits, informatics toolkits, and one of its most important toolkit is called the Parallel Computing Toolkit. The Parallel Computing Toolkit deploys MATLAB across your cluster with 